Okay, so trigonometry and introducing the trigonometric ratios. So basically what trigonometry is about is how can we relate the sides of right angle triangles, okay? How do right angle triangles or how are right angle triangles related to each other? Well, first of all, uh, right angle triangles, we know we can find a side if we've been given two other sides. So for example, you know, if we have three and four, okay, we can use Pythagoras to work out that that side is equal to five. But we're not always going to be given every single side of the triangle. So we need to talk about a few different things about different right angle triangles. So let's start off with this. Here's a right angle triangle and we've got three different sides around it. Now the first side is called the hypotenuse and we know, or we should remember that the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angle triangle. Or in other words, it is the side that is opposite or across from the right angle. Okay, so here's my right angle here. My hypotenuse is the one that goes across it. So you can see these other two lines or these other two parts of the triangle are next to the right angle, whereas the hypotenuse is not next to it at all. Now, the other two sides are called the opposite and the adjacent, and they depend on what corner you're talking about. So in this corner here, we've got a little theta. Now, theta is just a Greek letter that represents a missing angle, and we should remember that from our geometry. So this theta is going to tell us whereabouts our opposite is and whereabouts our adjacent is. So this theta is talking about this angle here, okay? So that's our angle here. Well, the opposite side of that angle is the side that's not the hypotenuse, but it's the side that's the opposite of where that angle or the angle we're talking about is. And the adjacent is the one that's just next to it, okay? So let's say instead we were talking about this angle up here, okay? Let's, instead of using theta this time, we'll use alpha, okay? So we're talking about this angle here. So alpha would mean, if we have the alpha there, that means that this one here would be the opposite, or the O, and this one here would be the adjacent, okay? So that's if we were talking about this corner in here, because the opposite goes across and the adjacent goes next to it, okay? It's really important that we understand that that's how we name the sides of the right angle triangle, because this trigonometric stuff is all about where these things are. Okay, so the theta is a Greek letter that is used to identify the unknown angle. Okay, I'm just going to leave some little drawings there. Okay, so when we're talking about the three ratios, we have a particular name for how the different sides are related. Okay, so there are three ratios because there's three different possible combinations that we could have that can be used in right angle triangles that are, and we're going to use them, we're actually going to apply them more in the next lesson, but this lesson is just about identifying which ratio is the one that we're going to be using. Okay, so there we go. So the ratios are, so let's start off with our triangle. So it's all about these three sides. So here's my angle called theta here, and we've got my opposite going across there, my adjacent there, and the hypotenuse that goes across there. So the first ratio we're going to be talking about is called the sine ratio. Well, it says sin on there, but it is pronounced sine. So sine theta is the length of the opposite side. So whatever this length is here, divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So the length of this hypotenuse here. Okay. So opposite over hypotenuse. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Our next one is cos or cosine. And cosine is the length of the adjacent side over the length of the hypotenuse, okay? So adjacent over hypotenuse, and that's cosine. So whatever the length of the adjacent is, you divide it by whatever the length of the hypotenuse is. Okay, and our last one is called tan or tangent. Tan theta is the length of the opposite, so whatever this length is here, and over the length of the adjacent, okay? So tan theta, the relationship or the ratio between the opposite and the adjacent for tan is just the opposite divided by the adjacent, okay? 
So basically, if we're saying if this was 3 and that was 4, then 10 theta is equal to 3 on 4. Something like that. Okay? Which we'll be looking at more in a short moment. Okay? So, this is one of my favorite things. Some old hags can't always hide their old age. Or Sokotoa. This is what we called a monomic, monomic, I can't even say the word monomic, that basically allows you to remember, well, which ratio do I use for which different sides? So some old hags, S-O-H, so sine opposite hypotenuse, can't always hide, C-A-H, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, and tan, uh, their old age, or tan opposite adjacent. So it just tells you the way to write your ratios. Now, we've also got another little one, which we say Sokotoa, and I recommend writing this. Whenever you're asked to answer a question about right angle triangles, you actually put Sokotoa on the top of your page every single time. So, so, whoop, so, sine opposite over hypotenuse, ka is cos adjacent, hypotenuse and tan is opposite adjacent. Okay, so basically these three groups or these like nine letters basically tell you the order they go in. And so it's just a quick way to remind yourself, okay, well, how do I, you know, which one am I going to use for the different parts I've been given? Okay, so this is it here. Combining the monomic with the ratio, so Sokotoa, sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tan opposite adjacent. Um, so it's just a way to remember which one, which sides the or which sides are used for which ratio. Okay. So let's have a look at some examples. I'm going to start with question two for this one. So label the triangles sides with O for opposite of theta and A for adjacent of theta and h for hypotenuse. So this is really straightforward. All you need to do is label the hypotenuse the opposite and the adjacent. So start off with the hypotenuse first. It's always the one that's across from the right angle. So that means it's that one there and that one there. Hypotenuse, hypotenuse. Now the opposite is the one that's the opposite. So it's going to make a cross with the line that you've already drawn for the hypotenuse. Okay, and so this one here goes across there. Okay, so it's just a quick way to remember it. So it makes a cross, and then the adjacent, well, that's the one that's just next to it. It's the one that's left over. Okay, so adjacent and adjacent. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to do for that question. Okay, for this triangle, state the length of which uh, corresponds to the hypotenuse, the side, the angle, the angle, and the angle. So angle of theta, so the opposite angle of theta, the opposite angle of alpha, and the opposite, the adjacent angle to theta and the adjacent angle to alpha. So the hypotenuse is the same no matter what. So the hypotenuse to this one is just the 13 because it's the one that's just across there. So 13 meters. Okay, rub that out. The side opposite theta, so we start where theta is, which is in this corner here, and our opposite means that we're going to draw our line going across, and that gives us that 5 metres there, so 5 metres. Okay, now opposite for alpha, so we're going to remove that line, now alpha is up in this corner, and the opposite, again, we're going to cross over, so that's the 12 metres there, okay, so 12 metres and 12 metres, okay, so that is alpha's opposite, now we're going to do the adjacent for theta. So adjacent is the one it's next to. Okay, so the line where we don't make a cross, so that one's 12. And in fact, it's actually the same as that one there. And the adjacent for alpha, well, that's just this one here, five meters. And that one is the same as that one. Okay, and there we go. So that's our question three. So that one's pretty straightforward too. Okay, use the given side to write a trigonometric ratio in fraction form for each of the following so triangles and simplify where possible. So as I said, start off by writing so ka toa, okay, 
This is going to help us which ratio, okay? So let's start off by labeling our triangle. So we're going to start off by doing the hypotenuse. So over here is hypotenuse. I'm just going to do HYP, hypotenuse. Okay, so if we've got a hypotenuse, that means that we can't use tan because tan has opposite and adjacent. It doesn't have hypotenuse in it, so it's not going to be tan. Now, our next one, well, that's this one here, okay? It's next to the theta, and it's not the hypotenuse, so this one must be the adjacent, so I'm going to do ADJ. So, which trig ratio uses adjacent and a hypotenuse? Well, it's the one in the middle, the cosine one, so cos. So, what we do is we write cos theta, because theta is that little Greek letter that's there, is equal to, now it's adjacent over hypotenuse, okay, so cos theta. So the adjacent is 5 and the hypotenuse is 7. And that's it, that's all we need to do for that one. Okay, this one here, we've got a one that goes across. So my hypotenuse, I always start off with my hypotenuse even if it's not there. Hypotenuse, well there's nothing there, so I'm going to cross out both of the ones that use hypotenuse. Look at that, it just leaves me with one straight away. So I need this one here, so it's going across, so that's the opposite. And then this one here is the adjacent. So which one uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that's TOA. So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? So that means tan theta. Okay, the opposite is 24 over the adjacent, which is 10. And that's it, we're done. Okay, so those are the two answers to that one. All we're doing is just writing out the trigonometric ratios because then in our next lesson, we're actually going to be manipulating them. So we're just practicing writing them out today. Okay, so questions five and six look a bit like this. For the two triangles, write a ratio in simplified fraction form for sine of theta, cos of theta, and tan of theta. What do you notice about these ratios? Okay, so we'll start off with triangle A. So we're going to start off with sine. Okay, so sine theta, oh, I forgot which ones I go. So what does sine do? What does cos do? What does tan do? Remember, Sokotoa, he's gonna tell us. Okay, Sokotoa, so sine opposite hypotenuse, cos adjacent hypotenuse, tan opposite adjacent. So sine is the opposite. I'm not gonna write these ones down because we'll run out of room otherwise. So the opposite over the hypotenuse so the opposite is 8, and the hypotenuse is 17, so 8 over 17. Okay, that's that done. We're finished with that one. That's all we need to do. So cos, okay, adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 15, the hypotenuse is 17. Okay, so 15 over 17. That's it. That one's done. Okay, and tan theta for A. So these are all for A. So tan theta for A is opposite and adjacent, so we're going to do opposite and adjacent, so 8 over 15. And that's all you need to do for that one. Okay, now let's do triangle B. So we'll start with sine, so sine theta. So opposite over hypotenuse, so that's equal to 16 over 34. Okay, cos well, that's the hypotenuse and the adjacent. Okay, which order do we do it? Adjacent first, hypotenuse second. So adjacent is 30, and then the hypotenuse is 34. And then finally, we've got tan. So tan is the opposite over the adjacent. So 16 over 30. Okay. So that's it. That's all we have to do for those ones. Okay, and it doesn't help to also label them as you're doing it too, just to sort of say, yeah, I know where these ones are coming from. Okay, so hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Okay, so now we need to say, well, what, what do we notice about these two different triangles? Um, what do you know about, notice about ratios? We've got 8 over 17 for the first one, and 16 over 34 for the second one for sine, 15 over 17 and 30 over 34 for the cosines, and 8 over 15 and 16 over 30 for the tans. B ratios. 
are what? Something of A ratios. What do you notice? If I divide 16 by 2 and 34 by 2, what do I get? If I divide 30 and 34 by 2, what do I get? And if I divide 16 and 30 by 2? B ratios are double of A, or double of A. Okay, now last question. For the triangle shown on the right, write a ratio in fraction form for sine theta cos theta tan theta and sine alpha cos alpha and tan alpha. And then is there anything that you notice about the sine and the cosine in each part? Okay, so let's start off with sine. So the hypotenuse is always going to be the same. And remember, start off with Sokotoa on the top. So always first. Hypotenuse is always going to be the same. It's the one that's going across. Now we're going to focus on the sine first. So we'll label the tri... Ah, oh, sorry, on the theta first. So this corner in here. So when we label our triangle, we're going to base it on that corner there. So we're going to ignore this one for now. So I don't care about that. The opposite side to theta is the one that goes across. So this is my opposite. And my adjacent is the one that's next to it. So this one is adjacent here. Okay, so that's going to obviously change when we do theta uh, alpha. So sine theta is equal to opposite over a hypotenuse. So OH. So that's 12 over 15. Cos theta. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So 9 over 15. Okay, and tan theta. Well, that is just opposite over adjacent. So 12 over 9. Okay, so now I'm going to erase everything except for the hypotenuse because we remember, well, we know that the hypotenuse is always going to stay the same, okay, because the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right angle triangle. So next we're going to do sine alpha, cos alpha, and tan alpha. So basically what I'm saying is we're going to ignore this theta down here this time, and we're going to be using this corner here to determine where my opposite and my uh, adjacent are. So opposite, again, it's the one that shoots across. So this time it's 9, and the adjacent for this one is 12. So sine, opposite over hypotenuse for this one. So opposite and adjacent. So I want my opposite and my hypotenuse. So this one is 9 over 15. Cosine, or cos of alpha, is 12 over 15. And my tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent. So that one is 9 over 12, okay? So this ratios stay the same no matter what. Now, the last bit is, is there anything you notice about the sine and cosine of each part? Well, if you have a look between these two and these two here, those ones, they're basically exactly the same. So sine of theta is the same as cos of alpha, and sine of alpha is the same as cos of theta. And actually, in fact, if you have a look at the tans as well, the tans are exactly the same, except they're the reciprocal of each other's. So one is a, a, a swap of the other, okay? So that is it for this one. So with that being said, everything from this one onwards is considered extension. It's not compulsory, um, but again, it'd be good to have a go at. Now, I believe I do have you guys starting at question one for this one. Okay, but question one is just a matter of saying, well, what is, uh, you know, what does the H stand for? What does O stand for? What does A stand for? Sine theta is equal to what divided by hypotenuse? Like, it's pretty easy. I think you guys will be right with this. Okay, there's not too many questions for this one. In fact, it only takes up a, like, it's mainly just big triangles that takes up the page. Okay, so with that being said, um, I will see you guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.